Um, so we have Nick Easley, I believe, is next, unless there's a, a change of order here. Nick, you're unmuted and ready to go. Super duper. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Nice to uh, actually be on the other side of the equation. Um, also manage a few venture funds in the space um, with, with Multiverse. Um, 3C is originally kind of my, my baby. I accidentally started years ago, and I'll get my screen up, and Brad uh, said to wear a collared shirt, so I'm wearing my uh, undercover cowboy uniform up here in the high country of Colorado. After 10 years in suits, it's kind of nice to uh, take a little bit, bit of break um, and get real and, and focus on the company here. So I'll get my, uh, my screen up for everybody. Here we go. So just, just to run through, through a little bit, and I'll just kind of keep it open here. Um, you know, 3C, I originally started here in Colorado with uh, another company called 3E, Easily Environmental Engineering. That was back before cannabis was a cool thing to say. And most of you know me from like being in the industry now for well over a decade. And 3C is a company that when I started it with 3E was really helping the, the medical cannabis caregivers transition to the first legal compliant cannabis industry here in the United States that we've seen. Through that, I learned a lot of issues that operators have transitioning from that illicit side of the industry to the legal industry. And my main goals with my background, I was an airborne cryptolinguist for the United States Air Force, speak a variety of languages, but uh, originally from farm country in Wisconsin. And I, I really love this plant. I'm a disabled vet. And I just couldn't help to, to be you know, inquisitive of where was my medicine coming from initially here in Colorado with those caregivers. And when I went to a basement and saw all the, the tie-dye nutrients and pictures of girls on the wall, scantily clothed, and all these like beautiful little plants in this filthy room, I was like, this isn't where medicine should come from. So I started to tap into my- Just so you know your uh, presentation is not open yet. Well, that, that's uh, wonderful. That, that's cool. um, it says sharing screen here, but- um, that, Yeah, we see it, but it's still like in, not in like presentation mode. That's all right. You know, it's okay. a little uh, non-traditionally. Okay. <laughs> so like I said, um, uh, th thanks so much for the heads up there. But yeah, the, most people like master grower didn't mean master business person. So navigating compliance and license applications, I got a lot bigger to help those operators in Colorado 2007 through nine. Through that, got to pick up some equity positions and really learn what states do when they transition from a quasi-legal to a legal to a full adult use market. So now over this last you know, few years, you know, now well over a decade, um, 3C has now worked in 34 of the states. Um, we've worked in more states with investors and then worked in 17 countries and holding equity positions in, in well over 160 uh, companies. 3C itself is a you know, single member LLC that has holdings uh, companies above that just to limit liability. But then through that, we're able to actually sometimes take equity positions in clients in really long-term um, positions with our companies and clients. Now, I didn't want to just start a company. This was actually accidental years ago and have now, you know, very much scaled into this industry, but it was really to make the industry more environmental, responsible, just for actually using agricultural principles to produce an agricultural commodity. You know, through that, we have this patchwork of U.S. states where we have worked in every single state since its inception. So with our knowledge management system, we know what's happening, where it's happening, and when, and through that, able to make you know, creative marketing approaches and help businesses, especially now with social equity programs, to really create bona fide lasting companies and deep confidentiality agreements with our clients. But many of the multi-state operators were clients, you know, back in the day, some of which we have positions and we get to watch and, and nurture them grow. So in actually contemplating a raise for the first time in 3C's you know, history, um, as we just always cash flow the business and can continue to, but as we're growing, looking for some more strategic partners in running larger scale uh, consulting companies, because when you think about our revenue model, um, we're a relationship based firm when we do, you know, any sort of when I put my investor hat on like a consulting company is just revenues. But when it comes to the equity positions, the holdings and what we get to know, um, building a larger relationship with some strategic capital helping other investors with their investment strategies, vetting investments. And also when we see unique advantages come up, it's not just looking for a, you know, a minority shareholder position here, um, easily can continue to justify cash flowing the business as we grow. But when you think about what we've done over this last well over 10 years with myself at the helm, you know, having worked in all of these markets and had multiple offices, um, we've really gotten to see the industry in a way that most people don't get to get under the hood with companies or when there's a problem with applications or when Illinois is popping up and putting in 91 dispensary applications for clients, 
many of which taking equity positions or having referrals and different uh, commission agreements coming forth, it's allowed us to see things differently. So, you know, I've got a, a large team, most of us in the United States, I've got some staff in South America, some staff in Europe, navigating those compliance issues of working in these new countries has been been great, but having eight different languages um, as part of our skill sets as our team, not just from my background as a linguist, but always looking for that diverse uh, kind of group to help. And when I think about what, what the raise is here, it's essentially I'm doing a 2 million convertible note. Um, this would actually be able to come into three CR holdings companies and portfolio companies, past, present, and future. And as a typical use of funds, marketing and branding, and really entrenching to get through this next 18 to 24 months, even though things are stable and fine and, and actually growing well, but to really entrench ourselves as a large term kind of exit for a consulting company acquisition or just continue to build our equity portfolio. But be it consulting services, the investment management services, or starting these new companies in the new states, just finished. Dutch applications for coffee house uh, production just this last week. Um, today, I already worked in, in Massachusetts, in Michigan, in Maine, in Arizona licenses, California delivery company worked this, this morning, and then also dealing with some Peruvian uh, financial structuring here this afternoon. So never know what we get to get into, but I'd love to have some strategic capital and direction and uh, outside kind of services to help us grow with this uh, capital raise if we choose to do so. Great. Thank you, Nick. Uh, judges, uh, let's just see if anyone I haven't heard from a little bit, uh, Frank or Daniel, either one of you like to kick it off? Yeah, I, 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 I would, I, I'm curious to know what is, um, you know, you, you had mentioned that you, you have a long-term, um, you know, you kind of have long-term investments. Um, I know VCs typically have that time frame that they want to kick companies off the, off the books, right. Or, or, you know, get the, the exit. How long is the typical uh, hold for you? Uh, for, for, from our venture fund and what we do, or, or are you mentioning with 3C in our equity positions? Yeah, with 3C in your equity positions. Is there a time frame, or is it just, you just let it run? You know, most of our funds, we do like seven-year exit, but when it comes to our portfolio companies, I've, I really have a short, medium, and long-term approach with some of these positions. Some I know are going to cash flow and have nice exits when, when it comes to data companies or companies with more IT kind of platforms. Others with many of our international positions, we know that those aren't going to have really good cash flows, balance sheets, and EBITDA for the next two to three years, but the long-term positions will be phenomenal. So I like to balance our equity holdings based on that strategy. Some quick cash flows, like I sell a Danish company for 5.4 million euros, have various equity positions within that, some nice exits for you know the internal shareholders that we, that we use that for. But um, it, it's definitely balanced based on the portfolio company. What are the terms on the convertible note and uh, you know, what do you see in terms of uh, happening kind of down the road in terms of path of growth for you guys? So you know, that, that convertible note, I'm open to different options um, depending on what the investor would need for that because there's just capital and I can do that all day. I mean, I was dealing with my London investment group earlier today and I could, I could go to that, but I'm really looking for strategic capital. So on a convertible note basis, um, those terms I'm, I'm flexible on. 3C's done well over 12 million in revenue over the last five years just alone. Um, equity positions on that, depending on who you're using for your independent valuations, um, could be well over 100 million uh, domestically and about 200 million internationally. Um, so that, that convertible note, I'd be open to structuring that to where essentially if payments aren't meant, that's an equity grant um, you know, with, with board seat strategic directions in the larger holdings company. Um, but, but mostly I, I would be doing that at like a $10 million valuation for that 2 million convertible note with some additional options and warrants if, if, if desired. Nick, in the convertible note, when it does convert, will there um, also go interest in these 150 or 100 um, companies you have equity interest in or the firm does? Yes, ma'am. Um, so, you know, I started my company selling my, uh, my pickup truck about in 2009 to make payroll and become bona fide. But yeah, of those equity positions that I've coalesced over the years, um, I wouldn't be setting some sort of like timeline where all previous ones are mine and you get to be in part of, you know, just the future. So this is all past, present and future equities that would be on the table for us that we acquire. Um, but that would be through a holdings, you know, as you know, Sherry, uh, unless I made a specific um, SPV, like a special purpose vehicle for each um, portfolio company or client that we get, get equity in, 
when it comes to, let's say, the Bureau of Cannabis Control in California, like owning 15% of a company there, I might hold that equity and it goes to a holdings company for how like profit sharing and distributions would happen. But if I were to add you, let's say at a 20% position of that, you then get the joy of doing all the background uh, checks every six months, fingerprints um, in, in multiple markets, hence why I have a, a live scanner on call when it comes for those sorts of positions. So that would be an all past, present and future. Nick, can you just unshare your screen real quick? Yes, and then yes, we have time for one last quick one. And if I can ask a follow on, like wh where is that portfolio valued that you have? And then how do you plan on funding successive rounds in that? You know, so, so current, current equity positions here, I'm setting like the value of the, the consulting company lower based on revenue streams. Um, even, you know, operating 50% margin, it's still the cash flow of the business. Um, domestically, I, I would state that depending on your valuation, um, independent auditors, I'd say that's around 100 million currently in domestic domestically and internationally about 200 million. Um, many of these positions though, just based on current times, I'm not looking for liquidity events based on current market trends or any sorts of IPOs. Um, for those portfolio companies currently, that'd be a death sentence. So, um, you know, cu currently based on domestic and international, I'd say well, well over 300 COVID times, you could easily cut that in half to 150 if you wanted. Um, for 3C, for su successive rounds, I'm pretty comfortable with where we at. I just know that we, where we could go with some gas. It's like what I do with all of our investments with, with portfolio companies and clients. Um, I just like to ramp this up a little bit faster, make it a little bit more bona fide and professional in a few of these different markets where we have massive work to do. Um, but instead of taking all of these minority equity positions and growing organically, I think we can grow a lot faster. While many companies are starting to fail in the space, we're thriving and have been for years. I just want to get bigger, faster to be able to help this investment network get more equity positions uh, in some very unique and sometimes exclusive portfolio company opportunities. And also, you know, to be a homie, help you with your, your side too. We have a breadth that's bigger than anyone I know when it comes to our network for how long we've been around. And I'd love to be able to help leverage uh, some wisdom uh, and praxis with some other investment opportunities and funds as well.